Hello, I'm Pastor Jerome Ryan. Welcome to In The Moment Show. Thank you very much for gracing us with your presence, sitting ringside, waiting to hear the next move of God. We thank you today. I have a great friend in studio today, Dr. Judy Shaw. She's not a stranger to many. And we have some great insights today that we just love to share with you. So stay tuned because you are in the moment. Hello, I'm Jerome Ryan. Welcome to In The Moment. Thank you for tuning in and we are honored today to have in the studio with us um, a great friend of mine who's no stranger to many around the country. Uh, we're going to be talking today about understanding the times and so I want to uh, honor my guest today. Thank you so very much, Ms. Dr. Judith Shaw. My pleasure, Jerome Pastor. My pleasure. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, we uh, go back many years in ministry yeah. and uh, we uh, have been blessed of the Lord to be able to do some things around the country. Last year going yeah. to Africa, Lagos, Nigeria, yes. being able to take the team over and share some things in yes. the area of leadership. Yes. And I'm just honored to be a part of the team and what God is doing through the work that God has entrusted in your hand, be a part of what we call the dream team. And Judy, would you just like to take a few minutes and just kind of give us a little introduction about what you're doing and what God has done and some of the things that you've stepped into, of course, over this last year? Well, I'm in the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm in the, the timing of what God is doing. I'm happy about that. I feel like I'm in the direct will of God as it relates to my assignment, my life purpose, and that is to uh, engage myself even more with the body of Christ uh, on equipping and training uh, and bringing uh, revelation knowledge to them and also uh, with doing this great harvest time, reaching the world, the masses, and helping with some of this injustice in the land to bring about a justice uh, through God's word and also by some of the efforts and initiatives that he's blessed us to do. Um, for an example, uh, not only in the United States, you know, worked on the Indian Reser Native American Reservation for many years, and my hands are still into that, um, helping uh, people come into a greater relationship with God and their spirituality. Uh, and then we cross the waters and go over to uh, Ghana, Africa, where we've I started to work changing nations and uh, cause a new village to Excellent. come into um, fruition with a school, Excellent. With, Excellent. Uh, with dormitories and uh, just many things there for economic purposes. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to go down the street in Africa to Kenya where we built the girls school and compound there in the bush. And yes. uh, so those are the things that we're doing to help promote um, God's love and uh, all of these things have been injustices in the land, whether it's slave trafficking, uh, uh, sex trafficking, and we deal with all of that. We have a, a place for women to come to be not only educated, but also um, given the initiatives to start their own businesses. So my, yeah, my hands are full, my heart is full, and uh, my joy is unspeakable to see transformation like this. Yes. Amen, amen. Well, I tell you, God has used you to do a great work and to be able to facilitate opportunities for many to come alongside of you and to serve on the platform that God has blessed you. And, uh, you know, um, one of the reasons why I invited you in to, to uh, end the moment show today is to talk about some of the things that we, uh, well, you know, there's a pandemic out here that, mm -hmm. that we've all stepped into worldwide. Everybody's aware of it. And we see a lot of shifting yeah. going on. There's a, there's a shift that has taken place a new place, a new space, and today we want to talk about understanding the times mm -hmm. that we're in, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, that, that that's the thing we're talking today about, the generational uh, batons, mantles, assignments being passed down. Yes. You know, every, there's a se time and season to all things, mm -hmm. and um, so we want to talk today uh, about the um, issue of the, the, the present time this is mm -hmm. the in the moment show and we're talking about the now yes. understanding the times that we're in all that's going on right now is still a part of something that God is doing mm -hmm. the uh, pandemic that we, we we're experiencing is not something that has just happened 
and it's now dictating some things yes. that are going to follow. Yes. I think the move of God mm -hmm. has dictated some things, and the pandemic happened to be a part of that. That's true, Jerome. That's yeah. true. Yeah. It ain't so much about someone releasing something into the atmosphere that has brought about deaths, but I think that's a response mm -hmm. to something that God has already done. Right, right. And all of these... Uh, uh, these changing times that we live in and, and and praise God that we may be in a changing world where we serve an unchanging God yes <laughs> that he never changes but uh, it, it it goes to show and I, I believe that this shift these shiftings that we go through uh, as we look at the Word of God that that God has given us uh, we certainly can see uh, the signs Yes. of these times. Mm -hmm. they, they, we, we get these signs, we get these warnings, we get these cues before, you know, um, some of the last day end time prophecy is fulfilled. Uh, yes. Matthew 24 surely denotes that in the last days we shall see these things that we're seeing now. Uh, the pandemic uh, is just a sign of the last days. And I believe that as uh, these end time prophecies come into fruition one by one and start unfolding, you're gonna see uh, a spiritual awakening in the world like never before. You yes. know, atheists and uh, atheists and agnostics that did not believe at all. There's there there's a there's a crack. There's a light now, and to see how the end time prophecy correlates with the word of God that was spoken, the yes. prophecy years and years ago, and actually seeing this come to pass, scientists are are saying amen to it. You know, in all of the um, in all of the other professions are, are looking and seeing and it's undeniable yes, uh, yes. so many things that are happening uh, are giving way to the glory of God and the existence of God and uh, he has his way to uh, uh, bring light to his people and bring understanding to his people now you know the word says before it's all over Every knee shall bow, and every, heart shall and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Yes. And so things have to happen in order for people to have a, get a rude uh, under, uh, uh, shakening for them to say, ah, maybe this is, maybe it could be. Well, I believe that there's going to be some phenomenal things, some unusual things, some supernatural things that's going to happen that's going to confound the mind of many going to cause many to look at God and say, this must, truly, this must be the, the true and living God. Yes, yes. You know, we talk about the sons of Issachar in the first, in first Chronicles uh, 12, 32. Yes. Uh, they knew the sign of the time and they knew the movement. Can I expound yeah, well, upon yeah. that? Yeah, the, the scripture says that um, there was a tribe of, of, of people, they were the lowest, the least of all the other tribes, when David was getting ready to be coronated as king, then there were a lot of tribes that came to uh, be on his side for many reasons, you know. Mm -hmm. Some didn't like Saul anymore, some just came to because he was a good man and they could get their, um, their, their bread and butter from him, you know. Mm -hmm. But out of all the tribes, and there were thousands and hundreds of thousands of those that were expert in bow and arrow, that were expert in machinery, were expert in, in all the things of that day, in that time. But the tribe of Issachar had, was, a, was a tribe of 600 in that tribe, 600 captains, I believe, I believe it said. And, uh, but they brought something to the table. They brought something to David that the others did not bring, and that was they had their ear to God. Amen. They had the understanding of God. And they understood uh, what time it was, meaning what was needed for that day at that time. And then they understood what to do. Of course, it's one thing to understand something, but it's another thing to understand what to do. Yes. And then the last one is doing it. <laughs> right, right. And I really believe that in these last days, um, in understanding these times, that first of all, we, we, we've, we've got to take another look and a deeper look to say that, this it's, it's come upon us. Right. This day has come upon us, and I really believe that it it takes uh, people like yourself and uh, that God has spoken to and given visions and dreams to make the announcement, the clarion call that this is the day of the Lord. Remember Peter on yes. the day of Pentecost? He said, "Wow, this must be what Prophet Joel prophesied about it in the last days. You know, this great uh, outpouring would happen." So he saw it. He discerned it. He discerned it, and then he proclaimed it 
and then the actual work of the New Testament began. I believe that we are in another great move of God, yes. another era uh, as it was in the New Testament that God is doing something so great as recorded. Jesus did say, you know, greater works shall oh, you do. do. You know, there should be a greater grace upon you. There should be uh, a time when we, when we will see in the earth what we've not seen before. Mm -hmm. And so he released that time to us and it said the time is coming. The time is coming. And guess what? The time is here. Right. The time is here now for us to be a part of this great end time move that God is that God has brought to the earth. And as Daniel says in the second chapter, He's the only one that can call the times and the seasons. Yes. yes. So we're in a, a a very special day. This is not an ordinary day, but this is the day of the Lord, and we're seeing the sovereign move of God uh, as we have seen with this pandemic. I don't care how much money you had, what your influence was, who your God was. It was all shut down, Pastor. God mm -hmm. shut it all down because he wants everyone to know that, you know, he's still in charge. He's larger than charge. Yes. And the earth is the Lord's and the, the fullness thereof. Yes, so I think we're seeing the hand of God. The thought that come to mind, the, the scripture come to mind, um, greater works shall we do. Greater works meaning that through salvation... Through yeah. the word of the Holy Spirit, he can do what he did in his life through four billion believers at one time. Yeah. What he did, what the Holy Spirit did in the life of a, Jesus, of yeah. he can now do through the life of believers. Yeah. Moses went up to pray and God says, tell Moses, tell the people, I want them to come up and... The folk told Moses, Moses, you go and talk to God. Mm. Mm. And uh, yes. you just tell us what God says. Mm. And we're in the hour now where God is saying, the pastor, you've done a great job in representing me. But in this hour, mm. I'm calling my children to a place, into that secret place, mm -hmm. where they will have to hear from me for themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No more formulas. I want you, my people, on their face before me, yes. and to have a t attentive ear. Yes. As far as here to have an ear, let me hear what the Spirit is saying yes. to the church. And I think there are some crucial decisions yes. that the body of Christ is going to have to make today. And if they move today mm -hmm. on what God said yesterday, many believers are going to be living with slave Isaacs, because if if Abraham. Mm -hmm had moved Wednesday on what God said Monday, he would have lived with the slate Isaac. And being in God's face is where we're called to in this hour. And if we're going on what was told to us a week ago, and we move today, and didn't, and is not listening to God in the moment. In the moment, yes. Because when he was about to amputate Isaac's head, mm -hmm. it was at that time God spoke. There are some words and there's some insights that we have. In this hour. Yeah. But because we have a tentative ear to God and we can hear God in a moment, as we begin to move on some things that, are, uh, that, that has life and death attached to it, mm -hmm. there are some marriages that are about to be restored. Mm -hmm. And just because of an unwillingness to yield to God and to hear God in the moment, those marriages won't be restored. Right, restored. right. There are some jobs that are about to be lost. Come on, yes. And the jobs are going to be saved because someone did everything that was required of them. But because they have a tenth ear, they're in God's face. Yes. They're able to hear God in the moment and to be able to respond to in the moment because yes. God's a spontaneous God. Yes. Yes. And so God is going to honor that because what happens is uh, many times we become spiritual and we become students of the word. And then we get good at doing God. Right, right. And God don't want, I think that was Job's issue. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that God needed to prove anything to the devil. I think one of the reasons why God allowed Job to come under attack is the fact that Job had got good at doing God. Wow. Yeah. And what God longed for was not a man <clears throat> who would be recognized as the greatest right. or the most uh, spiritual man right. of his hour mm -hmm. or the most trusted or the most mm -hmm. faithful guy. Mm -hmm. But God longed for Job. Yeah. To rest his head in his yeah. bosom. There is always uh, a 
noun word uh, because uh, it's, you know, this is progressive. Uh, there's a preceding word out of the mouth of God. And uh, Paul tells us in Corinthians that we move from glory to glory to glory. So that's ever changing. And, and so he's, he's speaking and he's, you know, he, he lays on top of a foundation, another foundation, another foundation, so we can keep advancing. I always say, I don't want to be where God was. I want to be where he is. Yes, that's present. Yes. I want to be where he is. I want to know what he's saying now. I, don't, mm -hmm. I, I praise God for the old glory, but I, the fresh glory, you know, because the fresh glory automatically has the old glory in it because he built upon mm -hmm. it. In the Old Testament, he said, you know, not for finding fault with it, but for, for looking at a higher perspective that I want to do something better. Yes. I, I want to do something greater. But that was our, uh, that was our landmark to look at. And so he's always uh, showing us a greater way and a more effective way and uh, a way to advance the kingdom. Uh, and these why this is why we're living in these changing times and because we have to move we never stay where we start yeah. we, there's a timeline yeah. we have to keep up with God's timeline from Genesis yes. Exodus Leviticus Numbers Deuteronomy yeah. Joshua Judge Ruth there's a timeline and, uh, and it's for us to understand where we are at or on God's timeline so that we can make sure that the urgency that's in the hour you know if, if, it's, if you have to be at work at 5 o'clock uh, in the afternoon, and it's 12 o'clock, there's no urgency. But when 4.30 comes, there's an urgency. Yes. So I'm yes. saying that we're at the last of the last days, and there's an urgency in the atmosphere, and there's a noun word to to move us out of the way. You, if you would tell Jay, you would tell your son Josh, when it's time to go someplace, come on, Josh, we leave it in 20 minutes, come on, Josh. And Josh playing around like he does, you know, hey, Dad, you know, do what he does. And then... Uh, you know, and it's okay. Twenty minutes, you got twenty minutes, but five minutes or three my minutes before the time. My movement him changes. Yes. My voice. Temperature. Your voice. Yeah. Oh yeah. You did you hear? What, did you hear what I said? My body boy? language changes. Every your mood changes. Yes, yes. I'm saying God's in a different mood right now. Yes. Because of the urgency of His word, and He has to cause some things to happen uh, to to confirm His word. He He's doing this for His name's sake. Yes, yes. Pandemic is for His name's sake. Yes. Because he had to reset some things, put some things back in alignment, cause some things that happened that should have happened a long time ago. But 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 he put you know uh, assignments and mantles and in people's hands, and it was not it was not completed. So he's just like you know, like he did with with the children of Israel. Time for me to come down. Let's talk about that yes. passing on the mantles. Yes, passing uh, you know, understanding for this this time. And very season. very good important point because um, the word is given um, to to Abraham and at the core of Abraham's call was that in Genesis 18th and the 19th verse that his assignment was to teach his children the ways of the Lord. Yes, and we remember it was always the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That was there has to be a linking to. Each generation about God, the ways of God, you know, the knowledge of God. And so passing on uh, the, the, not only uh, mantles, but passing on the word of God so that we can be in alignment with his eternal purposes is so key. Yes. Passing the baton from one generation to another. Uh, passing mantles, Elijah and Elisha. Elijah was going away and somebody had to take that mantle on and, yes. and it could have been more than one person but one person decided to follow closely and desired to, to be used of God and so that mantle was passed, passed on Elisha and of course the Bible records that he did double the, the, the miracles that Elijah did uh, and the work carried on and so the, the, that's a dynamic that has to be understood that from generation to generation to generation, the assignments, cut, you know, pass the ball. Uh, you know, you ran your course, pass it. I finished my course. Now you got to pass it on to someone else, and then the, then you got to pass it on. So we keep you're passing yours on to your son, and right. so it's important that we understand the call of God on our life, and that we don't live unto ourselves. But it's really all about the next generation. You know, yes. one of the problems in um, uh, not only church but in uh, corporations, we don't we, we fail to plan for that next. Yes. 
a lot of times, whether it be the next pastor or or, or the next vision for the for the company, we 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 we, we fail in that. But um, that's a very important dynamic is that generational linking together of God's word and the mission that it can continue on. Certainly, Jesus passed the mantle, the assignment to us when he said, occupy until I come back. Right. That we're to reconcile the world back to God. And, and what, what leaders have to understand is this teaching here. The Bible, the, the Jesus came teaching the, 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 the message of the kingdom. Yes. And he says, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man who planted a seed, mm -hmm. and it produced after its own kind. Yes. So he used the trees and the seeds of the trees to give us an illustration of what the kingdom is like. Mm -hmm. Play it forward. In reality, what he's saying is you plant yourself as a seed, plant your wisdom mm, in the good. life of your sons that's and good. daughters. That's good. And, that's and, good. and they begin to duplicate that's after right. its own kind. Mm -hmm. Because what, what trees do, seeds are innocent. You put the seed in the wrong environment, it doesn't grow. You put the seed in the right environment, it grows. Yes. He says, for the king is as a man who took himself, created the right environment, mm -hmm. and poured himself into another. Yes. And then that man began to duplicate the ministry anointing that is in your life. Not that he's going to become you, but what part of you that represent the kingdom he's able to duplicate that mm -hmm. and operate in the gift that yes. God has given him yes. and so we think about three steps dependency independency and interdependency when I was a kid a baby I was dependent upon my mom and dad at 18 I became independent so I began to operate as a independent young adult yes. Interdependency, now I'm married, I got kids, and I'm now doing with them what my mom and dad done with us. And yes. anything that does not honor those three steps is unnatural. Mm -hmm. It brings death. So if a ministry refused to raise up sons and daughters, it's mm -hmm. unnatural. Mm -hmm. And God will accomplish what he does. There's many other plans in a man's heart, mm -hmm. but God's purpose shall, mm -hmm. will prevail. Well, and the word says, in blessing you, and he gave that, that, that word to Abraham, and blessing all. Uh, I'll bless you and multiplying it. He talked about the the, the many stars and, right. and how you know he was a father of faith and the yes. generations to come and to come. So uh, uh, it, 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 I, I know we're getting down to the end. So I, in closing, I'll say this: that whenever you're talking about spiritual fulfillment, yes, spiritual fulfillment from the Word of God mm -hmm. and, and 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 what God has planned in the earth, you talking about it. You talk about it individually. Mm -hmm. You talk about it corporately. Yes. You talk about it territorially, geographically, mm -hmm. and then most of all, you talk about it generationally. Yes. Because he he spoke. Repeat that, that again, Doctor Shaw. He you talk about it individually. Yes. I, there's there's something that you can't it's stop. Redundant. Go yes. <laughs> and then this corporately, then he yes. blesses the corporate, and then uh, he he's always made promises to geographical areas and lands. Yes. And then generationally, yes. where spiritual fulfillment must continue from generation to generation. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Well, that, 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 that is a very powerful word. Um, I know we're winding up, we're, we're coming to our closing, and I want to say, Dr. Shaw, I must have you back. You know, this has been great. We're going to have you back. Yeah. We're going to pick up where we left off. Always good. And um, I, I want to say, to those who are viewing the In The Moment show, thank you for joining us and yes. gracing us with your presence and capturing what it is God has given us on this platform to share with you. I'd like for you, if you would, like, share, subscribe to InTheMomentShow.com. And uh, we thank you once again, Dr. Shaw, yes. for being a part Always of this broadcast. And we look forward. And is there something you want to say in closing uh, as we uh, yeah, exit this. As a matter of fact, I wanted to say to the listening audience to do exactly what uh, uh, the Lord has commissioned us and called us to do in these times. It's so important to uh, reiterate the word of the Lord to our children so they can pass it on, so they can have something to uh, grow and uh, learn by, but also to live by. The word of the Lord is life. And so I want to encourage you, mothers and fathers and parents, uh, to um, spread the word, to teach your children the ways of the Lord, how you got over, how you made it over, and let them know that the same God that was there for them would be there for them. 
So I just, I wanted to, I did want to share that. Well, thank you very much. And thank you all for tuning in to In The Moment Show. Bless you.